five, four. Three, two, one. Good morning. Morning. Howdy to you. Nice little hat you got there. Why, thank you, sir. How do you guys like my hat? You ain't got a hat on. This is the hat I wear. That's weird, man. In the streets, I'd be like, man, I'll peel your cat back. I'm like, you're going to peel my cat back? That's so weird. I've never even heard that no? in my whole life. Good. That's kind of weird. Is that What does that mean? Like exposing you or something? No, like they're going to kill you. Like they're going to peel your cat back. Really? Yeah. They're going to... You know what that just reminded me of? <laughs> you oh, your the cat. movie Cannibal. Oh, Hannibal? Hannibal. So. Oh, he he got he really got his... Oh, have you ever heard this one? Remember he was eating that guy's... Yeah, oh, his own oh, brain. Oh, that's Have you ever yucky. heard the one where... Um, oh, man, you may forget. And peel your cat back. What's the other one? And I don't remember. All right. There's another one. Anyways. Right. Oh, well. That's Anyways. weird. Anyways. Weird. Oh, yeah. I'm going to split your wig. You, you've heard that one, right? No. Oh. That's... I'm going to split your wig. Wow. <clears throat> yeah. That's some weird lingo. Yeah, I don't know any of those lingos, yeah. guys. Back in the old days, they're just like, hey, I'm going to shoot you. <laughs> 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 now it's all these weird lingos. Wow. <clears throat> so anyways, wow. guys. Wow, just wow. Today... It's Thursday night for us. Friday morning for you guys. My right side feels weird, babe. Tell it to stop. Stop in the name of Jesus. It feels weird. Yeah? Yeah. So we just got back from a pizza dinner. As, <laughs> as you guys know, it was Matthew's birthday and he was in San Diego. And then he got stuck in Las Vegas. <laughs> And uh, so today, um, since Bobo lives here, Aaliyah came, Gabriel was late, so he, we came and went and everything, he's still on his way, but <laughs> I guess he's going to get leftovers, but yeah. they all went to the store together, so we're like, you know what, let's do this devotional now, that so nobody's here. So spend some time with them when they come. Yeah, because when they come, and then Gabriel said he wants to stay the night, and it's like, you know what, let's get this out of the way now. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we're just hanging out with you guys, man. That's why it looks really bright, because actually, can you believe it? The sun is still up. It sure is. Yeah, so. Nice. It was really nice hanging out with all the kids, guys. Like, you know, just having them. We took them to, um, we went to Round Table. Yeah. So that they had some, they had some pizza and wings and a little bit of salad. And, you know, just something simple. That twisted you, bread. Yeah, you can't, you can't take, uh you know, all these kids out to a restaurant or anything big like that. Not when you have a whole bunch of kids, so. Well, they're adults. But. Well, for us, they'll always be our kids. But um, it's kind of hard, you know, so we're all just like, we're just going to go take them for pizza. Something simple, pizza and wings, that's what you yeah. guys are getting. That one was good, though, guys, because it's, I don't like pizza sauce and either the Sharon. Yeah. Especially after bariatric surgery, it made it even worse. I can't stand it. It's like too vinegary or sour. It's sour in my stomach. Yeah, so we just uh, we usually get um, just like a just a creamy regular creamy white sauce and just thin yeah. crust. Oh yeah, with thin yeah. crust. I always get something like and with artichoke. Then, I eat with, one slice. Yeah. And I get full. Yeah. So, so it was very simple. Very, you know, we got a chance to just sit down and talk, and we were watching the Olympics at the same time. And we were joking around, and then the kids were like, you know, hey, we're going to go to the store. And I said, okay, so we'll meet you guys at home. But um, it was nice. We got went to the church. We actually did some errands. We ran some, ran some errands for um, to go get some of the stuff for the memorial um, and went to go drop it off so that some of the women can pick it up from the church. And uh, I think that's about it today. Yeah. And then went to go meet with the owner from the church um, so we can take care of some of the stuff with him. And uh, and here we are, guys. We get to do this early so that we can spend the rest of the evening with the kids. So, yeah. With the young adults. <sighs> okay, young adults, guys, with the adults. I'm always going to call them kids. I know. I'm just messing around. How come okay. you're... Why are you, why is your elbow, I don't know where to put this arm, it's just like, I don't, you're taking my 
space here. Why are you complaining? Because I didn't know where to put when my When I arm. get old, you're going to complain that I'm not near you. I didn't say that you'd be near me, but my arm... Goes on, so if your if your elbows on my knee, where does this arm go? I'm just gonna do a video like this. How about like this? Go ahead, put your. I'm just gonna do a video like this because I don't got nowhere else to put my arm. <laughs> like what am I supposed to do? You're a drama king. I'm huh? serious. How about I strap it around my neck? You guys, he's being mean. I don't know what to do with my arm because usually, look, I do like I hold the Bible. <laughs> I put my elbow on my knee. How about I just go sit over there? How about I hang upside down like a bat? How about I sit over there and you do the devotional by yourself? Why would... <clears throat> We've done 500 devotionals, guys, with my elbow always on my own <laughs> knee. All of a sudden, she wants to sit over there because she can't have my knee. That's weird. <laughs> 500 videos later. One time that I put my arm on your knee. Really? No. So tell me, <laughs> where's my arm supposed to go? One time I can't have my arm on your knee. Yeah, go ahead. Other times you want to sit there and go have your, your sweaty knee all next Look, to me. I'll just hold on and to the shirt. And why do I always have to have your sweaty uh, knee next to me? My arm's heavy, so I'm just going to hold on. <laughs> and you just go ahead, put your elbow on my knee. Stop it. Because if I let go, look what happens. <laughs> Stop it. I don't know what to do. Stop it. <laughs> How about I break it so then I can flip it around back? <laughs> How about that? David, you're... There was a guy <laughs> on <laughs> the old 80s Living Color show. And he was a substitute teacher, <sighs> and he had a dead arm. <laughs> <laughs> so he was trying to write his name on I the board. I want to drink some water. He was trying to write his name on the board, and he couldn't write it. <laughs> Can I drink some water? Oh, forget it, because I'm going to spit it oh, out. So then the kids it. were like, they realized he had a dead arm. <clears throat> so he go, and so he's teaching. He's like, oh, look at that bird. And on purpose, they're like, what bird? Where? He's like, over there. You know? Because <laughs> he couldn't point. <laughs> So then he he went like this, and he twist, and then he, he caught an arm right over there. <laughs> you never seen that? No. You know, I'm gonna have to show you after this. I'm gonna have to act like that guy. Oh my god, you guys, it's man. So I can't have my arm on your knee. Eight minutes talking about a, my arm. <laughs> Man, oh, God. I don't know what to do. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. I don't know what to do. <laughs> okay, what are we reading, man? <laughs> I could wear a sling. That way I match his suits from living with <laughs> He just got surgery. Leave him alone. <sighs> okay, Lord, help me. Are you done? Yeah, I'm done. Okay. <laughs> Can we continue? Yeah. So where were we, guys? <laughs> Go. Um, we're going to go to the scriptures of 1 Samuel, chapter 17, verse 38. I hope it doesn't talk about an arm. No, it doesn't. Okay. Okay, wait. Where am I again? 1 Samuel 17, 38. First Samuel seventeen thirty eight. Ay ay ay! Lord help me. Keep going. Thirty eight. Thirty eight. You guys ready? They've been ready. The okay. mind sponged up from uh, thirty eight and uh, thirty nine. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna be doing a few of these. Okay. Okay, so this is what's happening real quick. Is you guys know the Goliath story where David kills Goliath. So <laughs> he calls out Goliath. And because um, everybody, all the army of Israel was afraid of Goliath. And David comes out and he's like, man, you're letting this guy talk, to, talk like this about our God and our nation. You know, so um, he's like, man, I'll fight him. So Goliath was like, come on, let's go. 
So they get to King's attention, King Saul, King of Israel, and he goes, man, you're going to fight this dude. Um, you know what? Wear my armor. You can wear the king's armor. Like, that's supposed to be an honor, right? So he's, you know, put my armor on. So this is what happens right here, verse 38. It See, says and this. I was just giving you my arm. <laughs> so it says this. So Saul, this is a great honor, actually. Saul, the king himself, says, so Saul clothed David with his armor. Like, wow, I get to fight in the king's armor? And he put a bronze helmet on his head. He also clothed him with a coat of mail. In other words, the, this thing that, um, this armor, that, that way nothing could pierce his, his organs, you know? And, um, and then it says, uh, verse 39, So David fastened his sword to his armor and tried to walk, for he had not tested them. And David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these, for I have not tested them. So David took them off. Does it keep going? Oh, no. Yeah. That's good. I read it out of the message, and David reads out of... What are you reading out New of the King Amplified? James. No, New King James. Oh, okay. Out of the New King James. Then Saul outfitted David as a soldier in armor. He put his bronze helmet on his head and, belt, and belted his sword on him over the armor. David tried to walk, but he could hardly budge. David told Saul, I can't even move with all this stuff on me. I'm not used to this. And he took it all off. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. Did you just hit this? Sorry, guys. It caused an earthquake. So, basically, the king thought he was doing David a favor. By saying, you know what, you're going to fight him, you're going to fight in my armor. You know, which is probably the best and that all the soldiers had. Obviously, the king has the best armor. And David puts it on and he's like, I can't even move. I can't operate in your armor. And I think this is a good lesson in making something relevant, guys, is that you and I were not meant to fight the enemy with somebody else's armor on. You know, you you are conditioned to fight who you are the way you are. Got to fight your own battles. Yeah, you got to fight your own battles. That's why mm -hmm. even with the scripture that says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You know, because ultimately, guys, it's it's you and I that we're going to stand before God alone. Yeah, we got to carry our own cross. I think that's why also when kids um, come to an age, yeah. you know, they get to a certain age where they... They have to carry their own cross for themselves, you know, as well. And um, I think at that point is where they start to fight their own battles, you know. Mm -hmm. It's because they, they come to a point in their life where they're, they, they start to carry their own cross. Yeah. Yeah. They learn for themselves. You know what I like, too, just kind of thinking about it, is that David was a simple young man. He was a little shepherd boy. Yeah. He, he wasn't a warrior. He didn't go through basic training. He... He was just a shepherd boy that did not allow any animals to come take his sheep. Very simple. Very simple. It, it wasn't overcomplicated. And I think sometimes in ministry, things get overcomplicated when it should always be simple. Yeah. Your job, his job was to take care of his sheep. And he realized that these people were the sheep of God. And in the same way he took care of his sheep, you know, it, 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 it transferred to the same thing, you know, like, I remember at one point, we had lost our building, and um, we basically went to another church, and I didn't realize it till now that that pastor was trying to make me put a different, a different armor on, yeah. and it didn't fit, guys. I, I, instead of making me feel invincible, it made me feel limited. To the point where David was like, you know what? This doesn't fit me. Yeah. This is too heavy. I can't move the way I'm used to moving. I can't operate the way I'm used to operating. This is too complicated for me. All I know is I, I got to fight that giant. And I can't, this is going to, this is going to get me killed. Yeah. Wearing your armor is going to get me killed. And I think sometimes people impose on others 
Unfortunately, I think this happens in ministry a lot. I think it does too. And I think a lot of the times people always always say, you know, it's I think it's a it's a saying where people say, well, you haven't really walked in my shoes. Well, mm. yeah, you're absolutely right. That's good. You haven't walked in my shoes and you know, a lot of the times we got to remember that no, do we even want to walk in those people's shoes? We shouldn't want to. We should walk in in our own shoes, you know, and and, you know, there, I remember reading a, a book by T.D. Jakes. It was a very tiny little book. It was called Why. And under it said, Because You're Anointed. Remember that book I, I told, you told you about? Yeah. An amazing book. I remember that it. I read it literally within three hours because I was so into the book um, that I ended up having to buy a whole bunch of them. And I gave them out to a whole bunch of women. And um, there was one part in there and... and it says, you were just made so intricately that you're, there's nobody in the world that is, is just like you. There's always going to be somebody either better, worse, whatever. It doesn't matter. Not your mother's like you. Not your sister's like you. Not your grandmother's like you. There's nobody like you because God made you so intricately. You're just different. Yeah. And that's the thing that there is nobody that is going to fit your shoes just like you. And God made us that way, you know, and, and he made us that way for a purpose. And it's because we are anointed in, in his purpose. And we're not meant, that's the thing, we are not meant to be like anybody. And, and that's, that's the thing that we have to remember that, that when we go out there and do whatever it is that we're meant to do, is that we got to remember that we're not supposed to be like anybody. Yeah. We're made so different, and there's a reason for it. Mm -hmm. And we got to remember that. Yeah, I don't need to to I don't need to fit anybody's shoes. I just need to fit my shoes. So that's just a saying. That's a mm -hmm. cliche saying, you know. I remember as a kid, guys. I know this is way different for kids now, but I actually come from a generation that every boy had a BB gun. That was just a normal. I grew up in the country too, though. So all the country kids, all the ranchers kids out there, we walked around with our BB guns like we were straight up in the Western days. Like we would go on our bike rides. We would go out in the. Because here's the thing: there's coyotes out there. You don't know what's out there. So our parents would actually condone us to carry your BB gun, because because where my dad's ranch is, the river was about a quarter of a mile away. Yeah. And we would go all day long out there. So we would make sure to have our BB gun or as we got a little bit older, our pellet gun. Anyways, I had many, many, many pellet rifles, BB guns, you know. So I remember having those old, one time I had the cheap old Western that the, the cranks like this, you know, mm -hmm. the Western mm -hmm. style. Mm -hmm. That's probably the cheapest kind of BB gun you used to get. I think even to this day, like the da little Daisy. Um, but anyways, the barrel was a round barrel. It was not accurate. There was no, um, uh, I can't, there's no scope. There's no nothing. But man, I could hit anything with that thing. You know, and I remember a friend down the street had a pellet rifle that didn't have a scope, but had the little, I, can't, well, I don't know why, I can't think what it is right now, but, you know, to aim. I, for the life of me, I couldn't hit nothing with his. Really? Yeah. But with mine, that was only one pump, which wasn't a lot of air behind it, with nothing to aim, I would hit. That's because you were used to yours. I was used to my you, weapon. Yes, it was yeah. yours. So it's, it's kind of the same thing with David. David was a regular, simple shepherd boy. He didn't have a big old sword. He didn't have these things. What he had was a sling. And he, what greater thing that you would never run out of ammo if you have a sling because you just use rocks. Yeah. You know, and um, and with his weapon, he learned with that, and he killed Goliath with that. Yeah. You know, yeah. Is that them already? Yeah, probably. Oh, we're That's trying to okay. do a video before them. I know they beat us to it. <laughs> so. But see, you know, and 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 that's the thing is that we're we're comfortable in our own skin. You know, we're comfortable with who we are mm -hmm. and as we should be, though. Yeah. And that's the thing. We should be comfortable with who we are and should be able to conquer with with what we have and what the Lord has given us. Mm -hmm. 
and and we should be comfortable with that and i think that's that's important because that's self love it's it's loving ourselves for who we are yeah and i think that's that's important because he teaches us to love ourselves and he he teaches us that he is love and if he's in us then we have to love ourselves yeah and and how do we conquer the things of this world is through love because he is love you know and i think that's that's something that's real real important so there's something else in the verse hold on i can see it from here you can here. see it from here okay um where's it at he put his bronze helmet on his head belted his sword on him over the armor he tried to walk but he could hardly budge he was like, i can't even move with all this stuff on me i'm not used to it and he took it all off you guys are all gonna have to say hello as you come in so that's okay that's okay so abraham's really into laundry that's his hobby right now <laughs> so he just like i have to get detergent i have to get detergent <clears throat> And Matthew? He's the one that was stuck in Vegas. <laughs> Say hello. I went to Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> you know that saying, what, hap what goes on in Vegas stays in Vegas? Yeah, anyways. Anyways. Um, <clears throat> the, oh, it was the next verse that I wanted to talk about. Where's my Bible? Right behind it's, you. It's open, right? Yes. Yeah. Look at this next verse. So look at what he did. He's like, man, I can't fight in your with your bat with with your weapons. I can't fight with your stuff. So and then in verse forty it says, so he took all that off, and then he says, then he took his staff in his hand. Mm -hmm. This is the staff that he. Oh, what does it say in yours? It says, then David took his shepherd staff, right there, selected right five smooth stones. So he took his shepherd. This is the staff that he hit bears with. This is the staff that he hit lions with, that tried to come near his sheep. So he took his own staff in his hand. He chose for himself five smooth stones from the brook, put them in a shepherd's bag, in a pouch which he had, and his sling with his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. Just that verse. It says, Then David took his shepherd's staff, selected five smooth stones from the brook, and put them in the pocket of his shepherd's pack, and with his sling in his hand, approach Goliath. Yeah. I love the fact that he was so confident. He's like, I can't fight with your weapons. You know, I, 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 can't, I can't preach the way you preach. I can't teach the way you teach. I can't even operate in the spirit the way you operate in the spirit. He goes, you know what? I'm going to do it my way, the way the Lord taught me when I had nothing, you know? And, and I, I always tell people, I always tell people, you know what? Sometimes I feel like we're not a church. We're just a house church that happens to be in a building. Yeah. Because the way that we operate, because the very roots and foundation of how House of Rest is, even before you came, was, first of all, built out of a bunch of inmates that I would teach. And then... It started as a house church because I had House of Rest was in my basement, and I think there's there's pieces of that that have stayed that doesn't really match churches. Yeah. And I used to feel awkward. I used to feel like I have to conform. I gotta be like other churches and other pastors and this and that. And I really early on, and I even think even before Sharon came along. Early on, I'm like, you know what? I'm taking this off because I can't be what you are. Yeah. I got to fight this thing with the weapons I know. You know, and, and I think that's why we're different. But I think that's why even many of you guys are even watching us because you sense that difference. Yeah. And I think for me, you know, I've said it many times. It's like there's many times where I have felt very intimidated and I have felt like, you know, I don't preach the way David preaches. I don't. I don't know the history. I don't know any of that, but I've said it. But one thing I do know is I know where God, what God brought me out of, and I have my testimony, mm -hmm. and that I do know. And I tell David all the time, I said, I may not know what you know. I may not know how to bring forth the way you do. I may not know any of that, but I do know how to share what 
Jesus did in my life. And I do know how to share that. Mm -hmm. I know how to share my testimony. And I know how to tell people what Jesus did for me. And as long as I have that, man, guys, yeah. those are my stones. Mm -hmm. Those are, that's my armor, you know? That's what I put on. And that's what I'm able to exemplify, you know? I don't need to, I don't need to put on what David has. I don't need to do anything else. That's my putting on of what I have. And I wear it proudly. And I praise God for that every day. Yeah. You know, and that's, I think that's, that's what you need to do too. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you take what Jesus has done for you and those are the shoes you fit into. That's the armor that you put on. Those are the stones that you pick up. Those are the things that you pick up and you say, you know what, this is what Jesus has done for me. And that's what you wear proudly. Yeah, exactly. And guys, all across the board, I use this formula. I'll give you another quick example. Me painting. Um, I don't have formal training in painting. And times I've toyed with the idea of joining classes or doing this or doing that. And then I'll, you know what makes me back up from it? Is because I'll go on YouTube and I'll watch other people and I'll see how they do rocks. I'll see how they do clouds or whatever. And it confuses me. You know, and I have just learned, you know what, I'm just going to paint the way I paint. Maybe it ain't the right way, but this is the way I'm going to paint rocks. And maybe it ain't the right way, but this is the way I'm going to paint trees. Now, do I watch videos to learn from them? Yeah. I've, I've learned to watch other people paint things, and I glean from it, and I make it my own. Yeah. In the same way you bake. In yeah. the same way you cook. In the same way I paint. Same way I, guys, publishing books. I have no idea how publishers publish books. I just know how I do it. Yeah. And that's how I was able to extract the story out of Alfonso for his testimony. He was, he was the lemon and I squeezed every juice out of it, you know, but <laughs> I found a way. Yeah. Because I remember Alfonso goes, man, I want to write my story. I want to write my book. He was, but I don't even know how to read. And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, okay. We're going to make a way. Yeah. We're going to make a way. And we created a system. Him, Me and him just sit together. We created a system and it worked. Yeah. You know, it worked. And, and had he been approached by some other big publisher, I'm sure it would have been way different. Yeah. But you know what? We're just simple shepherds. Yeah. And we don't got all the fancy stuff and big offices and editors and this and that. And you know what? Through the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit's like, I'll teach you. You don't need that. All you need is me. And I think we, we did the same thing for, um, for even when we do the celebration of lives and the memorials and all of that, too. Oh, yeah. You know, it's like because we know. Yeah. You guys have to say hello to the camera when you come through. There's say Bobo. hello. <laughs> Just wave. There's Aaliyah. <laughs> oh, snap. Oh, whoa. That's so cool. That is cool. Yeah. Got a house full of young adults, guys. Um, it, it's really cool because... We still got one more coming. Yeah, we have one more coming, guys. Gabriel. It's really, really cool because one thing we learned um, from doing our the, the memorials or the, the celebration mm -hmm. of lives, when we started to see that there was families and how it was so expensive for families yeah, to man. do memorials and and everything... We didn't want our families to have to to go through that, guys. Um, we would see, you know, the burial places and all of that and how much it was costing yeah. them. And we were like, that's just it's it's a lot. It's it's a lot. And, and it's not first. First of all, families, they they're already going through such a hard time. Um, grieving and going through, you know, the loss of their loved one already and everything. And, you know, David having the capability of doing um, the technical part of it and everything and, and me, myself, with the creativity and everything. And, and we were like, well, you know, what if we came together and we put both of that together and we helped our families, you know, that, you know, that can't really afford that or can use the help and let's do something for them and put a little package together for them and see what we can do to help them, you know? And, and we did guys, we did start doing that. And 
we noticed that, you know, doing that and coming together, um, it just, it did something for them, you know, and we relieved a lot mm -hmm. of that, like even something as simple as just, you know, doing the memorial cards and, and doing, you know, the video, the videography and putting all of that, you know, just something like that. We have no idea how funeral homes do it. Yeah, we and, don't, but, but we make it happen. Yeah, we, we make it happen. We use the staff mm -hmm. that's in our hands. Exactly. You know, and um, guys, use the staff. What staff has God given you? Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know what? We relieve that stress off of those families and we do whatever we can so that we can be a blessing and just help our families because you know what? That takes a big old, a big old relief off of them. Mm -hmm. And you know what? As long as the Lord gives us the capability to be able to do that, then we'll do it. You know, if we can do it, then let's do it. But I believe that a lot of people have gifts and a lot of people have the capability of doing things. And it may take a little sacrifice for some of you to do stuff, but you know what? Do it. Do it. It may take a little time and it may take a little sacrifice, but I think, you know, I think a lot of you got to, you know, really dig deep into, into your heart and, and see what it is that, that you need to allow to come out so that you can um, allow the Lord to use those, those use those gifts and and really put them to use some of you guys are hiding those gifts and everything but um you got to put that armor on guys you got to allow yourself to be used for what it is that the lord's calling you to to do so yeah i agree use them use your staff yes use your weapons yes and and you're not gonna go wrong you know I think sometimes when we try to overcompensate and do because it worked for the next person. Yeah. And then you wonder why it doesn't work for you. Because that was never meant to be your weapon. You know, so anyways, I think that's pretty much what I wanted to cover. I like that. That was a really nice um, scripture. Yeah. It's yeah. a good reminder. I had forgotten about that scripture. Really? Yeah. 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 So, obviously, Saturday mornings, we don't have devotionals, so we will see you on Sunday morning. Um, the title of the sermon is The Call. That's going to be the title of the sermon, and um, that's all I'm going to tell you because I haven't written it yet. But the Lord gave me the title. Today, we're coming back from Modesto. We're just kind of bumping some worship music, and, uh, and, the, and the sermon came to me. Um, Oh, you were listening to the song I'm available, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, hopefully we'll see you Sunday. Every Sunday at 10 o'clock, we have service. We go live. If you want to have a reminder text, not a mass text, an individual text with your name on it, um, all you got to do is text the number, text the word H-O-R-C to 209 400 9725. I'll put it on the screen. Yes. And you text the you act like you're gonna text somebody, but text that number, but text the word H O R C and then it sends a link to you. Click on that link and that link's gonna ask you for your name, your email, and your phone number. Or unless it already does your phone number automatically because you text it. But yeah. then that gets put into a database with us, and then every Sunday morning, boom, I write an email. It puts your name, your individual, it's not a mass text, just to you. And it just reminds you, hey, we're about to have service, join us. And yep. that helps. A lot of people thank us because they're like, man, I love your services, but we live in another state or this or that, and we get mixed up with the time. So we thank you for that little notification. A and reminder. Yeah, so I send that reminder out on Sunday. And um, sometimes I do, I think on Wednesdays I do it too. Yeah, on Wednesdays. Yeah. That's it. I don't bug you. I get a reminder that. on Wednesdays. Yeah, I don't bother you. I don't hound you. Um, but it's a good thing that uh, that's individual and it's just a straight text to your phone. And that way you don't miss, you don't miss the services. Amen. So, all right, guys. God bless you. Have Bye, a great guys. weekend and see you Sunday morning. Yes. God Bye. bless you guys.